What's going on guys, Bladezilla here. Today we're checking out a real cool one from Shirogoroff. You may have seen this one all over the place. I know I've been pumping it a little bit on Instagram. This is the Mini Quantum Sprint Run. So there's two kind of versions of the Mini Quantum. There's the Sprint Run and then there's the Custom Division. Um, I believe the Sprint Run obviously precedes the Custom Division. But the big difference between the two, other than there's a couple, you know, coloring things, etc., is this guy right here. So there's an official name for this. I, I think it's called like Rotatable Clip System RCS, or it, it's something silly like that. But essentially, all it does is it has this really cool clip that we will talk about for probably a way too long period of time as we go on throughout this video. Um, so buckle up, get a coffee, etc. As a reminder, um, you know, a lot of these knives I do uh, have and sell and do videos on. They are on bladezilla.ca, which is my website. If you're in Canada, it's tax-free and uh, really good shipping rates and, uh, you know, access to products that we wouldn't normally have. So at the time of filming this video, here's the site. I uh, just got in some F3 Ignises, the fire. Uh, a couple of the new quantums, etc. Lots of cool stuff. Check out the site. Lots of great pictures on all this stuff. And, uh, yeah. Nice little plug for the site. But, we're not here for that today. We are here for this super, super sweet, ultra hard to find knife that uh, I think you're going to really, really dig. So, let's get started. Let's talk about this knife. So before we get into any of the details, let's measure this guy. We do want to show it in all its glory, as is customary. Um, you know, not a lot of people know what these things are sized as, because it is mini. Uh, so overall, we are coming in at seven and three quarters, roughly, with a blade of three and a half ish sharpened, maybe three and five eighths to the bottom. I'll leave that for you to decide. Now, in terms of comparables and size, you know, we're going to talk small pieces today. So, why don't we do uh, my wicked little Walter Randolph Neon. And remember, we are looking at a couple different angles here. The uh, camera is leaned behind the knife. So, if I rotate that around, you'll kind of see how it changes things. But they are very, very similar. We will do the sprint run of the Stellar, um, which is a beautiful demo blade on there, absolutely stunning piece. So there's a couple comparable size-wise. We will also do your wicked, ultra, ultra fun, custom division F95T. So there's a comparison in that size, which is a bigger knife, as you can tell, which is totally cool. And uh, because people just love to ask about this size specifically, we're going to do the small Sebenza, which is much smaller. And remember, so that's behind and that is in front. So take that for what it is. And we will also do the large Sebenza because, uh, you know, people just seem to know that knife size specifically. So there you go. I'll also put that in front, so it's way bigger, apparently, it looks way bigger, but back here it's not so much. Isn't that funny? So there is uh, there is your direct comparisons. Um, in the other sheer go off sizing, I don't think I have anything that would really be, you know, I could do the magnetic as well, if you guys wanted to see that one. It's a super common knife, or not common, sorry, super popular knife but essentially is the, almost the exact same size as the F95T in every single way, other than this beautiful concave scale on it, which is a work of art, uh, one of my favorites. But uh, that is not what this knife is about, or this video. This video is about this knife. And uh, let's get into some cool details on this beautiful sprint run from Shirogorov. So what makes this piece so unique and so cool? Um, other than this captive, uh, captive, my god, I'm filming this late at night, and my coffee long wore off, so, um, in prep for the week. <laughs> um, it does have a captive pivot, I believe, on this guy, but, uh, other than the rotatable clip, 
Uh, what's so cool about this? Well, it's essentially a mini quantum. Um, and I don't have, do I have a quantum here somewhere? I do have a regular quantum. That would actually probably be the coolest comparison to kind of see what we're actually compared with. Um, Full-size quantum production, obviously, but uh, there's the mini, ver mini version of it because that's in a lot of ways what we're kind of basing this off of. So starting on the obvious points here, remember we're comparing kind of a, a very high-end knife to a production, but uh, I don't unfortunately have uh, currently, for now, a, uh, a sprint run or a, a custom division quantum to compare directly against this. Um, but we can see some obvious styling cues from that sweeping Persian style blade to uh, the nice little cutout, while well, this being the cutout on the sprint run and the mini, but the nice little uh, shaping to the blade up top looks terrific. And then down through to the flipper where this guy's actually hollowed out, which looks terrific. Uh, but for the most part, we're following, following very similar kind of patterns to both knives, which is cool. Um, both super cool, both uh, super recognizable in the Shirogorov line. Um, that one running on multi-row bearings. This one running on uh, single row roller bearings. So two kind of different things there, but uh, also very different feel to them. I'll be completely honest. So, um, as, as we've kind of talked about on other sure grow-offs, there's kind of four, kind of, well, I guess mainly three, but uh, four bearing systems that they offer. Uh, actually, five, I guess, if you want to get out of bearings, but um, four bearing systems. So, single row bearing, multi row bearing, uh, single row roller bearing, and then dual row roller bearing. Um, think of the single row as a standard bearing in a circle, the multi-row as kind of a pinwheel of three bearings or two in some cases in a row in a line in kind of like the wavy sun pattern off of a circle. And then uh, roller bearings are like, uh, you know, think of them as hot dogs, which is super cool. From there we get into double row roller bearings, which is uh, a little bit different to kind of explain, but you've got uh, multi multiple rollers in different configurations based on the size of the blade and uh, very unique to Shirogorov and something that not a lot of other people are doing, but nonetheless, a uh, different feel to kind of each. So, you know, most production knives are single row or multi-row, but they do offer, and some of them, being kind of uh, air quotes there, um, they do uh, kind of some Teflon or I think Phosphor Bronze. I want to say they did a, an anniversary edition of the F95 on Phosphor Bronze. So I'm assuming some of their older models were also on Phosphor Bronze in that uh, kind of era. But uh, anyway, I'm kind of going off the path here. Um, onto the knife itself though, um, the single row roller bearings on this just are nuts. Uh, super, super smooth, super uh, controlled, and this knife just floats. Look at this. It just floats home. Bloop. Um, just so controlled and effortless. Um, currently this guy's got to be one of the most desirable in that custom division or sprint run lineup. And um, when I got this one in, I was a little concerned with the cost, but uh, you quickly realize why the demand is so high. Um, ergonomically, let's get into that. You put this in your hand. Remember, I'm an XL glove. Um, I've got I've got some grip here left, which is unbelievable, right? For my hand size, that is uh, not something I would have expected. Um, the the jimping, as well, is very usable. And the top of that blade, I'm trying to do this, the top of that blade is flat, but then it kind of angles out up top. So if you really wanted to choke up on this, you certainly could. But uh, the jimping, as they say, like if it's a perfectly fit knife, you shouldn't really need to, to worry about jimping. Your, your finger should kind of just fall on it. Um, I will say this. I can certainly fall past the jimping and it's comfortable because it's all rounded on both sides of the flats. Now, I will say this on the actual blade itself. I'm trying to get, sorry, I'm trying to get the light to actually to show this, but we've kind of got a, a polished edge. Now this particular knife is an absolute shiny example of that, so some of them won't have that, but uh, 
you know, it's, it is polished and very hard to show. Uh, it is very, very hard to show, actually, because the camera just freaks out. But you can kind of see what I'm talking about uh, for the most part. Um, now, if we, if we go on to the back of this knife, and I'm putting this blade away so I don't poke myself. Remember, my hands are wrapped around a tripod here. We've got this beautiful, big back spacer here, which I think it's a bronze anodized um, titanium back spacer, I think or brand, bronze backspacer uh, with that integrated lanyard hole. Uh, it looks really, really cool. It matches the clip color-wise, and uh, it looks terrific. Okay, It is 3D milled as well, so there's a lot of detail as you get closer and look at this thing in different light. You'll certainly see what I'm talking about. There's uh, an absolute ton of detail on this one. It just looks terrific. Now, the backspacer. I, you know, I've seen guys use this with some lanyards. I'm not. I'm not judging. You know, it is a smaller knife, and definitely, if it's a smaller knife, you are, you know, have the freedom to run a lanyard. It makes a lot of sense to me, but it's not my not my cup of tea. Um, the beauty of that, if we're looking at this knife and comparing it to say the Stellar, something that I love, is. You know what? The, the, it's 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 built in. You know, from the side, you don't get this really uncomfortable-looking uh, hole like you do on the Stellar, right? Um, they kind of just omitted that here, right? Where where it's like, come on, man, focus for me, focus for me, man. Okay, I gotta move that off the thing. It's freaking out. So, as you can see, you know, you've got to run that right through the back spacer, which is fine. Some people consider that a little bit of an eyesore. I personally really like how they're doing it on this and it's same same with the Hattie or the magnetic sorry and uh, the F95T they're definitely doing that kind of integrated little hole I just think it looks sharp it's uh, you know from the side it doesn't take away from the aesthetics of the design and uh, very usable still which is cool and looking at this isn't that so cool how you've got the cutout in the blade here, and you have the cutout on the flipper tab. I think that's so cool. It matches it really well. So what is, it might not mean anything from a, from a visual perspective, but I will say this. It means something to people who can actually use their fingers and flip it. Reverse flick it, right? I, I'm not going to do that on this one, but um, you could probably get your thumb in there to open it. You could probably get your little pointer finger in there. To pop it open if you really wanted to flick it out. So, you know, this is one of the Shirogorov's um, things that they're not known for, right? Is reverse flick, thumb stick, thumb flicking. It's all about the flipper tab. But when you cut that guy out right in here and you give someone some surface area, it just kind of opens the door to the fidget factor. And that's one of the reasons people are just falling in love with this thing. It's just nuts. Um, anyway. I digress. On to this thing. So what is this? Why do we have this? Well, on the Quantum CD, they don't have this. On the full custom Quantum, they do have this. You know what? If you're watching this and you have no flippin' clue, pun intended, what this does, you're not alone. So let's take a look at it. First of all, excellent milling as you can see. Uh, from this side, you can see what I love, how they change the direction of the milling to. So it's going left to right or horizontal, and then in the actual concave pattern of it, it changes to, kind of looks like a fingerprint. And it's a curved kind of feel to it. So I think that looks really, really sharp and is unique. And hopefully the camera is picking that up. I don't know if it is or not, but I'm hoping that it is. Because it's just an incredible detail on there. So what does it do? Well, we've got a little arrow, which uh, looks cool. Um, future iterations, I don't know if they need to put the arrow so uh, so big, but um, anyway, it pops off. There's a little ball in here. If it wants to focus, try not to do this out of focus. So it pops off like that, right? And now it's loose, and uh, it's it kind of swivels out, right? And there's the ball that it holds onto. It's like it's a little detent, but. Uh, it, it pushes out, and uh, see if I can get in. 
picture from the other side here. That might be cool to look at as well. There you go, a little spot. I'm trying to focus this. So a little spot where that ball goes into. And the point of that is so that maybe you're wearing dress pants and uh, you don't want it to uh, to kind of rough up the, the cuff of it or the, the pocket as you're sliding it in. Maybe you want to put it inside a suit jacket but still clip it on. You pop that out, you slide it in your pocket, and then you lock it in place. Or you don't even lock it in place. You just kind of leave it unlocked like that and you know open it up, slide the pant leg in or whatever, and leave it. It's all good. But it just kind of clips over, and it's a nice little feature that's only found on their full custom line, which uh, is just something unique, right? It's just one little add-on that the Sprint Run has that a ton of the others, well, I don't know how many of the uh, full custom have, but it's the only version that uh, their custom division or Sprint Run has currently. Um, I don't think they're making any more of these, and that's why the market is so absolutely banana lands on these. Uh, currently, um, I'm seeing them going for north of $6,000 US um, for a knife that's, you know, 2200 or whatever, 2500 US table. So it's, um, you know, absolutely crazy. It is the, uh, I think it just won the, the uh, Blade Show Collector's Knife of the Year as well. Because um, at the time of filming this, I want to say the Custom Division had maybe another 12 that were going to be hitting the markets. And, um, you know, they're already, geez, Custom Divisions are 5K easily right now. And uh, probably 5,500 if we're going into the, the fall season here in 2023. Um, so I can't see this going anywhere but up in price. From an investment perspective, it is, you know, a flickable GIC, which is kind of funny, to be completely honest with you. But love the, love the knife, love the design of it. It fits in your hand a lot better than you'd think for a smaller knife. Um, small, in air quotes for sure, go off, because their small knives are still three and a half inches, which are most people's large knives. Um, super smooth. I love the milling work on this thing. Hopefully the camera can see that. Um, like look at that handle guys. I don't know what you'd call this texturing, but you can see horizontal milling, micro milling all over here. You've got this beautiful Shira Goroff logo that's kind of just etched in here beautifully. Not etched, it's literally milled into there. Just beautiful. And then between them, You've got this like wavy kind of sporadic pattern. I don't know what they call it, micro textured or um, not too sure. It's so cool. And it just continues on the other side. You've got this nice curve to it for grip. The pattern's all length of the handle, other than that little Shiro logo, which I think is so cool that they're doing this now instead of writing that on the blade. And reminder, when it is not a custom division knife, they will not write CD on the blade because this predates it. So I'm assuming the SR sprint runs are kind of their first swing at doing those knives. So they usually do them up a little special and uh, make them look pretty and they do less of them. So super cool. And then on the blade, I haven't even mentioned this, this is M398, which you'd usually find on the opposite side which you don't. Oh, but you're probably wondering, where is that? Look at this little detail in there. Boom. M398. It's kind of hidden in there nicely. I love that. Um, I think that's so cool. Hardware, obviously, as well. Nice and sure go off thick. Uh, looks great. There's no concerns there. None at all. None at all. Um, we do have... Funny enough, I'm just looking at this now. So we have two screws here, one and two, that we can utilize with, uh, actually, funny enough, on this knife, we can use the standard shear grow off tool to, uh, to open this guy up. You don't need the custom division tool, which I will show you here in a sec, uh, if I can find it. There's your custom division tool. Uh, very similar thing, but this has one bit, which is a reverse flare. So think of it as uh, a reverse flathead. Does that make sense? So instead of a point that goes in, it's a hole that accepts the point. And uh, that would be found on... Let's take a look on the Stellar. I think it has one. There you go. 
So Stellar has one right in front of the clip here. That's its reverse kind of flare bit or whatever you want to call it. But uh, usually the customs have them, and the beauty of this knife is it doesn't. Because not a lot of people like that. <laughs> They're kind of annoying. Um, reminder, you know, you can use a standard screwdriver. For God's sake, please don't use it on this particular model or any of the custom divisions, just because you're going to wreck the pivot hardware. Um, you can get away with, you know, a credit card or, you know, a very light use of a penny in a pinch because it's a softer metal and you're not going to scratch it all up. But please, you know, if you're spending this kind of dough on this knife, just do yourself a favor, get the tool, it's 300 bucks, and uh, you're going to love it. Now, looking over this, one thing I did not even mention, so we have that cool back spacer, which looks unbelievable. But look how inviting this is, and the tolerance is here as I roll towards the blade, which is perfectly centered. Look at that tolerance. Look how centered that is. Not only is the blade centered, but it is perfectly centered inside of a little canal, I guess you'd say, a little piece that is already saying, hey, by the way, I know that for me to emphasize the centering on this, you have to be right in the middle of this very specific spot. And Shergroff's like, yeah, we'll do that. No big deal. We're perfect. We can do that. So it doesn't hide anything. Every little detail on these knives, they're next level. Like nobody is doing it to this extent. Uh, the micro milling, the, the 3D clips, the details, the sizing, the thinness of this is just nuts. Um, if I want to compare a couple, if it wants to focus, I don't want to get these too close together just because of the camera and my inability to kind of manage anything tipping here. But there's your Hattie Magnetic. Uh, let's grab your F95T, which is the same as the Magnetic, right? So that should be no surprise. So it's a thin knife. Think of it as... I think it's thinner than these two. It wouldn't shock me. So I'm going to take this one away because it's the same size blade thickness. So other than the concave front to this, it's uh, essentially the same thing. But like, if you look at a Stellar, okay? There's your Stellar. The Stellar is beautiful in hand. It's not fat. But look how fat it looks compared to these other guys. That's the one thing I wanted to emphasize is these are thin knives thin beautiful knives the concave is so cool in hand guys with like medium size hands are gonna fit this thing perfectly and love it guys with large extra large double x um, even uh even vlad if you guys know shergorov you should know vlad that guy's six four and i think a triple xl or something he uses one of these and a custom mind you but he uses one of these guys, and they fit his hands. He's got huge hands. It's very adaptive to the size of your hands because of the ergonomics on it. You know, I still have a full finger. It's like a neon. Yet, it allows my finger to choke up, and even if I wanted to, like if I had huge thumbs, I'm sure you could go right up there. Um, it's a very adaptive piece, which is so cool. I love that about this. I love the gold backspacer. I love the holes inside the flipper tab. And I love it on the blade because of the, the flickability and, and the options that it gives you. I love the logo on there. The milling, like, and this is, I, I don't know how much I can show with the camera. It's literally like, just done so well. It doesn't stand out. All the little details on this. Now we do have, uh, I believe, a metal insert on the lock bar. I would think. Or, uh, do we? I can't really see inside. Do they mount one inside there? I'm assuming that whole. I'm, I'm assuming that entire inset lock would come off there. Hey. Eh? Um, now we're looking at about 25% lockup. And I will say this as well. Looking at this, look at how that sticks up on the lock. Look how it just pops up just a little bit so your finger can engage it super smoothly. I will say it's uh, on top, you do notice 
I'd like it to be rolled a little bit more. That's not my opinion. Or sorry, that's my opinion. It's not what they're going to do. But um, it's very tight tolerances, so I don't know how much more they can do there. But you do notice it. So it feels pointy. Now, the inside of this is another thing I wish I could show in finer detail, because I don't. I will not open this knife up. But um, it's all milled out inside. And from what I've seen, they are an absolute gorgeous looking knife on the inside. Um, just from what I've seen. I'll shine a light down. You can see, I'm going to try to get it to highlight a serial number back there. It should say Sprint Run number 5, I think this one is. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. Number 5 written inside there. Sprint Run number 5. But for the most part, let's get that to focus a little different again here. For the most part, it's all milled out. It's it's lightened up to be, you know, somewhere in the... I, I thought it was around three and a half ounces. I don't have a scale. Um, it might even be lighter. I think it's like... It wouldn't shock me if it's like literally three ounces on the money or like 3.1 or something. It seems to ring a bell to me. 3.1. That sounds, that sounds right. 3.1. So just a hair over three ounces. And uh, so it's not heavy. Three and a half inch blade, 3.1 ounces. You're right in the ballpark of where it needs to be. It just fits your hand so well. It doesn't feel heavy at all. It doesn't feel fragile either. This thing feels solid. I'm very impressed with how solid this thing feels in hand. It's nuts. Uh, let's see here. We can see inside a little bit more. Yeah, I, you know what, guys? I think I need to get like a flashlight, like a little pen light to just flash inside here and show you some of these little milling pockets. Because when there's a backspacer, it just really hides all the light. But I'm telling you, they're works of art. Um, I'm not opening this up. Not in a million years. This thing is, uh, I hope, kept behind glass at night, uh, even though it's mine. And I don't keep it behind glass, it should be behind glass in a museum for others to see and take pictures with. But anyway, that's. I think that's the Mini Quantum. I've shown you how it fits in hand, talked about the bearing system, I've shown you some comparables, the color on it, uh, all that good stuff. I've talked about the lanyard talked about how smooth this thing is now actually I haven't look at this look how controlled this is it will not drop on its own I gotta lift it a little bit so I don't bump the flipper tab but look at this in every spot it like doesn't want to drop until you give it a little boop see it just floats it's just so smooth and incredible and uh, a piece that I really think this is going to stand the test of time um, I have been told they, uh, or I shouldn't say I have been told, I've heard that there's talk of making a production version of this, which should be coming pretty soon, I imagine. If you just look at the Stellaris and the Stellar line and how they've done production Stellars and soon Stellaris, um, it wouldn't shock me if this is next up behind that uh, or even sooner. So, uh, you know, keep your hands and uh, keep, keep, keep your hands on the keyboard, your eyes on the mouse and the screen because I think those are going to be hot. You know, we saw the first production Stellar come out and it bumped up the prices of the Stellaris and the Stellar, I want to say 500 bucks a piece, temporarily. So, it, you know, if we're already at six, six and a half, seven grand on this one, you know, the sky's the limit. And you're getting into, you're getting into full custom territory at that point, but, uh, you know, they're worth what people pay for them. And right now, they're willing to pay a lot for it. So, absolutely gorgeous piece. So pumped to have this one. Um, but the main thing is that clip and the size and the uniqueness. It's just so cool. Let me get a little close-up of what that looks like. If you want to see that. Getting a little close to the camera. I'm like an inch from the lens right now. You kind of just see how that works. The milling on it. It's just done so well. Love this knife, guys. Okay, well, I think I've talked long enough. That is your Shergoroff Mini Quantum Sprint Run. And uh, appreciate you guys stopping by, taking a look at that one, because I think that is a real cool, cool knife. And, uh, and one that people are going to love for a long time.
So that is that. If you have any questions, leave them below. I read everyone. I will reply to everyone, um, barring that it's appropriate. Otherwise, like, subscribe, share, all that other good stuff. And until next time, I will see you around. Okay, guys. Peace.